Hey guys, Pete here. Hope you're doing good. Hey, for those of you who've been listening to my little ride-alongs, uh, for all of you who sat through the first two or three, <laughs> God bless you. I know it was like listening to molasses flow. It was pretty, uh, I was bad. I was, I was feeling it pretty bad, but I had to do something. You, you know how it is. You gotta, gotta stay busy or you'll go crazy. But, um, but no, um, I've got a little lingering cough if it flares up occasionally, and it, it will at least once or twice. Um, <clears throat> please bear with me as, as I deal with that. But uh, hope you're doing good. Hope you're out there making it happen. Um, we had talked a little bit about uh, how, the, how, how the human brain uh, affects people's uh, actions. <clears throat> and how, what that means to you when you're dealing with customers, what that means to you when you're dealing with employees, especially today's generation. We've got a, a whole new set of challenges with the younger generation. Um, they've got a lot of options in front of them. They don't carry the same tradition and work ethic that many of us have had over the years because of influence and in our history. And so it may very well change the way uh, things go moving forward. Now, the interesting side to challenges, the interesting uh, aspect to, to, to problems, especially industry-wide, is that everybody is facing them. And we're seeing, for those people who may not be challenged right yet, we see the average age of their employees much older and less young blood coming in. Uh, even within family. You know, I know you guys know how hard this work can be. And I, I know when my son uh, was, my son was born right before I started my business. He was about a, he wasn't even a year old when I started my business. And uh, I remember thinking, you know, do I want him to go into this business or should I allow him to come into his own and decide what he wants to do? And, uh, you know, because it's my son, you know. I, uh, a lot of us want to force our views down our children's throats, and I didn't want that for him. And so he took his own path for many years. It's funny, he's an HVAC now, many years later. I could have left him a really tremendous business, but I I, uh, I sold, I got out. I got out uh, right around uh, 2001, there about. And uh, anyway, that's another story. But the mindset is where I was going with this. And I wanted to go down this path with you. I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you why right now. Have you ever seen these commentaries on financial? <coughs> um, have you heard the expression, uh, the millionaire mindset? You know, how is it that people who are millionaires uh, how are they wired differently upstairs than the rest of the world? You know, and how can you rewire your brain to be like them so that you can get similar results? And again, I've, I've warned on that. You got to be careful on that. But there, there, there's a lot of truth in that. And, and definitely there's some um, advice to be extracted from this reality. Okay. Have you ever seen on uh, television or online where you, you have these people who would win the lottery and they would be like millionaires overnight and two years, three years, they're about later, they're flat broke, they have nothing. <clears throat> the theory there is, and I don't think it's much of a theory, is that People are wired a certain way, and they're not going to be able to hold on to that money. They're not going to under, They don't understand, you know, how they need to invest and how they need to uh, be responsible with their their buying patterns, their purchases, and uh, you know how they spend their money. I I can remember 
a guy that used to work for me uh, temp- for a while. Uh, I hired him because one of my lead installers recommended him, so I, I put him on. And his parents passed away and left him the house. And he, uh, he went and got a second. No, he went and got a mortgage on it so he could have some money. And they gave him whatever it was back then, fifty, sixty thousand dollars or something. It was a, it was a small house, a very modest house. <clears throat> His parents didn't have a lot of money, but they did pay for their, they did pay their home off, you know. And he, <coughs> I said I wouldn't call. Sorry, guys. And he got that mortgage and he took that money and he went out and bought him a brand new motorcycle. And then he bought one for his buddy, the other guy that worked for me at the time. And they were buying this and they were buying that. And basically he blew the money. He blew the money and the bank ultimately kicked him out of his own house, the house that was paid for. That his parents had worked their whole lives to, to have and to be able to leave their son he was financially irresponsible and he lost it all. Well, Pete, how does that apply to me? I'm not that way. Well, you are more than you think. We all are. You are exactly in your life, your financial uh, status, your, your business uh, air level of success. You're exactly where you deserve to be. Uh, some people call it the law of attraction, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a, it's a science. It is a science. And until you go in and do a little bit of rewiring, uh, as long as you're bringing that employee mindset into entrepreneurship, uh, it's, it's going to hinder you. It's going to hold you back. It takes some rewiring. And so there's an old saying, you know, Man, the, the very classes they ought to be teaching in, 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 in school on finan- finances and how, how interest works and how compound interest works and how, how finances work, how the economy works, all this other stuff, they don't even talk about because the system is too busy building worker bees, right? They, they, they don't necessarily want you to understand all of this, which is gets a little conspiratorial they, but anyway, but it's not, it's not being presented. And so... Those types of lessons are given to, um, it's within the family usually. Now, there are some organizations and they meet and, and they share this information. It's kind of like kind of like going to a little private school. But the point is, it's just not public knowledge, right? And it's, it's just not part of the mental culture, the society's culture that, that we had built. I, I went through the phase back in the uh, 90s. I think I had every credit card that, that they put out. <coughs> you know, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, uh, American Express, all that stuff. And it wasn't very long that I'm just paying the minimum payments on these credit cards because I'd run myself up, you know. Nobody had, had, had explained that to me. My grandfather did. Uh, by example, mostly he didn't he didn't teach it, but uh, I remember him looking at me, shaking his head because I think I had got ten dollars or twenty dollars or whatever it was way back then, and he said that money's just burning a hole in your pocket. You can't you can't wait to spend it, <laughs> and he was right, you know, because as a as a child, uh, it, it that's it was uh, well it was. Just, it was just natural, uh, and because I didn't have to work for it, I didn't. I didn't have to go out and cut a bunch of grass. You know, Grandpa just slipped me some money so I could go, you know, do whatever I was doing back back then. And uh, you know, whatever I am, thirteen years old or so, I don't know. But until we rewire these things, it's we we're going to continue to build the exact same realities. And so here's here's where we're going with this, okay? We are in the HVAC business. We're entrepreneurs, or we should be, or maybe some of you are trying to make that transition. If we do not 
go through the mental rewiring and reprogramming over to an entrepreneur's mindset. And by entrepreneur, I don't mean just teaching yourself not to depend on that steady paycheck, but to go out and make your own. That's only part of this. This get, this goes deep, guys. This is really deep and important, important stuff. <clears throat> Until you go in and do the work on these things, you're going to be challenged. I speak to HVAC business owners just about every day in some form or fashion. And the patterns are there. The, the evidence is, is, is right there in front of them. And, you know, they're stuck. They're stuck. And it's, it's never their fault. It's, it's the market. You know, it's, it's, you can't get any employees around here. It's uh, people around here don't pay that. <clears throat> it's a host of other things. But what it truly is, it's an incongruency between what they want and what they are. You get out of life what you are today. You get that tomorrow or down the road. And I, I don't know if this makes sense, but this is a fact. <clears throat> what you do today, your mindset and your belief systems today, your behavior today, will shape and form and build a future for you down the road. How long? Well, you know, that depends on, you know, the whole spiritual un unseen side of reality that we really can't put our finger on. But it does exist. It does exist. <coughs> and a lot of it's just mindset. Now, I remember when I sold my business, I went to work uh, selling equipment for a little while. And uh, I was calling on a guy who was the sales manager for a big heating and air conditioning company uh, just outside of Charlotte. And uh, he and I were friends. We, we knew each other back from high school. I think I was a year ahead of him. And uh, we, we were really good friends. We were really friendly. And he was talking about the owner of the business. And he said, that man would drive, I'll never forget this. He said, that man would drive halfway across the state of North Carolina to pick up 20 bucks and turn around and drive halfway back. In other words, he wasn't lazy. He understood that if it was going to happen, he had to go make it happen. And that, that's, a, that's a mindset. I mean, why go do all that when you can just go home? I mean, is it really worth 20 bucks to drive all the way across? That was his point, uh, to go put yourself through all of that. Well, in his mind, it was. And this was a very wealthy man. He had built a, a business on based on new construction, but he had formed this uh, AOR replacement department. And my buddy headed that up for a number of years. <clears throat> and he, uh, my buddy eventually left. He started his business and he, he now operates a very successful business there in Charlotte. He's, he's a great guy and he, he, he worked hard and he deserves that. And I know, you know, he's really been able to take care of his family because of that. But this gentleman, you know, my friend I'm talking about, he was no dummy. He looked around, he saw not just what other people had, but he saw the mindset that delivered it. And he contrasted uh, slightly from that. Obviously, he, he admired that, but he didn't have that same, exact same, uh, I guess, motivation. And, 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 and uh, therefore, he, he maybe wouldn't go to that level, but he, he understood it well enough that he adapted his behavior and he attracted uh, something different. And uh, anyway... I uh, I didn't drop any names because uh, I haven't spoke to him in several years and I gotta get I gotta catch up with him. He's uh, like I said, old friend, and 
a lot of the guys that I, you know, worked with back in the day, they're all retired now because I, I was pretty young. I was a young business owner. I was very young, very aggressive. We were, we were hot and heavy going after it. I got a lot right, a whole lot right, but I also got a lot wrong because I didn't understand many of these things that we understand today, or I understand today, you know, hindsight being what it is, 2020, right? So, Pete, what does that mean to me? There you go again, you're rambling. Well, here's what I'm telling you. You need to get your mental game together. Now, well, how, did, how am I going to get my mental game together? Okay, I'll just change, you know. How do you fix something inside of your head? I mean, what should I do? Well, I think that many of us are going through life based on presuppositions. We presuppose that things are a certain way and we really don't go back and break things down to the level where we can understand why we think things are this way because they may not be. So, for example, industry norms, industry standards. If you, uh, the way that you set up a business in heating and air conditioning, if you're not doing new construction, most people aren't because that's pretty much fizzled <coughs> down pretty low anyway. Most most will go into the service replacement and they'll they'll go after that and they'll have a service tech. They'll really go after the installations and if they're smart, they'll build some maintenance agreements and start getting that that uh, monthly income and creating that relationship and they'll 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 create a name. They'll they'll do the whole logo and amateur it all the way out and they'll wonder why am I stuck when you're trying to copy somebody else when you're trying to imitate somebody else that's 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 a good first step but until you understand internally and you are uh, you are genuinely like that other person <clears throat> What you manifest is going to be superficial. And that's why I was talking about on some of these other videos, you need to come into your authentic, uh, your authentic self. When you're creating a brand, it needs to be authentic. Okay? We'll slap up this cool logo and we'll put the cool wrap and we'll, do, we'll have all the right stuff on advertising. And that will get the phone to ring. But it, it's not going to ensure your long-term success because there's a lot more to customer interaction than the initial first impression. And, and, and these, the, the, these people that you're hiring to represent you and your business, you don't know what they're doing when, you're, when they're in your customer's house. <coughs> Guys, I got I to, here's a story for you. Goodness gracious. I don't know how much of this I should share. <laughs> this is bad. So I had employees. And uh, one of the guys that worked for me, he was a little bit on the, uh, oh, wild side, let's say. Especially when it came to the opposite sex. You know where I'm going with this. And I had one of my other guys come to me and said, Pete, you need to get rid of that guy. And I said, well, what's going on? He says, well, do you know how Mrs. Jones... Uh, you know, leaves the back door unlocked for us. He goes, yeah. We went over to, to take care of her system. And this guy, I'm not going to say his name, disappears. And so, you know, my guy, the guy's telling me the story, starts calling out for him. And he's upstairs. And he goes upstairs. The guy's in the homeowner's lingerie drawer holding stuff up in the air. And uh, I said, you're, you're shitting me. Excuse the French. He goes, no, that's what he was doing. And I fired him. Immediately fired him. And so I'm at this little coffee shop, tea shop uh, customer of ours. And we, we did some light refrigeration. And the lady that owns it, she said... Uh, she didn't recognize me because I always sent my employees and I 
when I got rid of this guy, I had to go back out of the field, you know, because I wasn't that big. And so I'm over there, and she says, uh, you know, hey, how, how's it going? I said, you know, oh, it's good. We're here to take care of you today. We're going to go ahead and go through all your refrigeration equipment. We'll clean all the coils. We'll check the heating and air, change the filters, and make sure you're in, uh, you know, you're, you're in good shape and all that good stuff. And she said, is this person still with your company? The same one that I'd fired. And I said, uh, uh, no, ma'am, he's no longer with the company. And I just wasn't going to say anything more. And she said, good, you're better off without him. And I said, this piqued my interest, obviously. At this point, I said, excuse me, what, what's wrong? Well, I really don't want to say. And I said, um, I'm Pete Ramsey. The name of my company was Ramsey Services back then. Uh, I am the owner, and I would really like to know because I have had uh, at least one complaint. And she lit up and she started telling me, she said, he would, he, he evidently had pulled her personal phone number from the file. He would call her at home. When he was there, he would speak to her like a, speak about himself like it was a third person, if that makes any sense. And, and start going down these different seductive paths. And was creeping her out, but she was afraid of him and was afraid to say anything. Can you believe this stuff? And then I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I, you know, I assured her, I said, listen, ma'am, I am so sorry for that. We, we never would have hired him had we known this, et cetera, and so forth, right? And there was another story. There was another story. There was another lady. She worked at, she was a very attractive uh, wife of an HVAC contractor who... I wouldn't want to mess with. He was a he was a you know pretty tough guy. You know, he was a good guy. And this guy would, this guy the one that I fired, would call her because she worked at one of the supply houses. Um, I won't say which one, <clears throat> and pretend to be a lingerie salesperson. You see the kind of stuff that anyway it. She was telling me a story and. Uh, it, 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 this is the kind of stuff that is out there. So now that's an extreme case. That's an extreme case, <clears throat> but I had no idea. I had no idea that this guy was like this at all. I mean, I knew he had his girly magazines cause I came across one of them in, my, in, in, in the truck, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, he's a guy, whatever. And he, He had, he, I found out later, he had been raised uh, during some difficult, under some difficult circumstances. You know, there's no excuse for this. Don't get me wrong, but this is the kind of stuff that uh, can influence people. And in today's world, that can be pretty crazy. That can, there's a lot of liability. I mean, I, I've had some, I've experienced some things too, you know, personally that appear one way, not even, don't even appear that way, it's, it's interpreted in the wrong way. And the next thing you know, you could be in trouble. All over a misunderstanding because this type of stuff exists out there. All I'm saying is when you look at your business and you're trying to build something and you have to have this, you have to have your head on your shoulders, right? And this does mean rewiring. And that's exactly what I'm going through in the HVAC X, X factor program. It is about finding your authentic self, creating the right mindset, reprogramming yourself for success and, and continuing to do the exercise and do the work as you mature intellectually, mentally, your belief systems, your having an actual vision. You always hear, well, what's your mission statement? What's your vision statement? You go write this stuff and you stick it in a book somewhere and you never see it again. The reason these things are done this way <coughs> is because once you do the work and if it's genuine, it becomes 
it becomes it just becomes part of everything that you do. It's an extension of yourself. It's real. It's something that you can be passionate about. I know it's hard to be passionate sometimes about climbing up in attics and under houses and you know all the other stuff that we do. But there's a greater vision there if you've done the work that's very inspiring and it's very motivating. And when you come into this identity and, and you've built it on something that's very real, you very carefully invite other like-hearted, not like-minded, not just like-minded, I should say, like-hearted individuals to join you on your journey. Because if they internally are wired different than you, it will manifest. They used to call this being two-faced back when I was <laughs> back when I was younger. Your your employees will behave one way around you, and they'll behave totally different around your uh, other employees as well as your your customers when nobody's around. They can be themselves then. And in a lot of cases, you've got some good people out there uh, that that connect with your customers even better than you do, perhaps, which is uh, always a good thing if you can if you're fortunate enough to find those. But there are these other things that people just want to be themselves, and it makes other people uncomfortable. It, you don't know why you lost the customer. I remember sitting in Ron Smith's class. Remember Ron Smith, uh, HVAC Spells Wealth? I went to a training program that he put on back in the, probably around 1994 there about, when he was teaching what he called dominant market share. And he had this big three ring binder that he'd given us. And uh, remember it was brown and, and it was all the different tabs in there that we were gradually building over the course of a year. It was a year long training program. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Love Ron Smith. Um, and he comes to that one section on the customer and it had this animated photo of this little old lady. And it had some text written beneath that. And it said, Something like this. <coughs> this is Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones represents a huge percentage of your customers. She's very quiet. She doesn't complain, but she notices everything. And when you offend Mrs. Jones or when you give her poor service or something of this nature, she won't say anything. She won't complain. She'll just very quietly go away and never come back. And it was just such a powerful message that your customer base, your following, they don't always tell you when you, well, they rarely tell you, when you or one of your employees does something or they find something in their house that doesn't look right, like their top drawer, not quite closed. Maybe, I don't know. And they just quietly go away. They're non-confrontational. They're passive. You know, I don't want any trouble. I just won't call them back. And there's different grades of this. It can get pretty, pretty crazy, but... I think that what we do in our head is we are so focused on our business and we're, we're dealing with uh, higher level challenges than our employees are. And we're so focused in what we see is obviously the tip of the iceberg. What we see, we generally judge the rest based on that. And we assume that our team, uh, our, that they're, they're behaving as, as we would. Uh, just like we assume that they approach system diagnosis the way we would. And they won't. This is why you have to uh, take the time and put these things all together. And it, it, it takes time, but it, it's not that much, not nearly as bad as you, you would think. But uh, in doing so, uh, it, you, you ensure a more successful organization. You should be doing the work. We as an industry, and I talked about this on a prior recording, we have to not just speak to the logical mind with, with stats and data and you know, here's why you need to invest in this particular system, et cetera, and so forth. We must appeal to their internal emotional triggers. 
emotional triggers. Uh, I think there's a book. Gosh, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, it, it, it's entitled Seven Triggers to Yes. It's a good business book for you. Seven Triggers to Yes. It lists the seven emotional categories that if you pull those triggers when you're interacting with your customer, when you're marketing to your customer, and there's different ones, they internally bypass the logical mind and they make a gut feeling decision. I'm going with this guy. And when you understand how to utilize this, it's very powerful. And marketers are using it on you every day. This is why franchises do so well. People do what they did yesterday or what they've had prior success or prior good experiences with. They're going to come back and do it again and again and again. That's, that's the way things work. And then when you set yourself apart, you do have to contrast your competition, but you must be familiar enough to where it feels like something that they would, that they are wired to do a certain way. You have to make doing business with you very easy and very, very, very natural. And I know I went a little deep on that, uh, but you need to know this. Okay. So if you deal with your customer, understanding that they're not going to behave in a logical manner, that you have to understand that psychology a little bit so that you can communicate with them differently. Why should it be any different with your employees? <coughs> You're going to speak to them logically? They'll just nod their head. Yeah, boss. Okay, boss. They're not going to speak what they truly feel. You're going to tell them to do one thing and they're going to do the opposite. Why? Because their conscious mind is not in charge. It is something deeper. And until you learn to deal with that, you're going to have problems. And it includes you too. This is what's holding you back. And we all have our plateaus. We all have the levels that we hit and we're kind of stuck. And, and it, it feels like it's everything outside of us. It is not. It is you. It is you. If you want to come into yourself and go to that next level, you got to rewire your brain. You just won the lottery. You got a business now. Don't go broke in three years. Don't burn out in five, six, seven years. We get that part upstairs fixed. And you can do this through training, through exercises, through um, rituals, and definitely through association with others who are on a similar path. This is what will allow you to evolve as a professional. And you don't have to be the smartest cookie in the batch. I know we're always looking at other people and comparing ourselves. Well, wow, he's so smart. Oh, he's got, uh, that one has so much charisma. Got more personality. I'm, I'm, I'm not that way. That's not me. Well, maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe you are the problem. <coughs> Don't mean that to be offensive, but we all need to grow. And here's the thing. There's absolutely nothing that anybody else is doing that you can't learn to do if you give enough time and energy to learning that skill or that trait or developing that characteristic or rewiring your beliefs. All of this is connected. The world has brought you so far and it's like the ocean. It's blowing you all over the place. Pulling your X factor together gives you a sail and it gives you a rudder and it gives you a compass. And now instead of getting blown to and fro, you can literally chart your own path, your own direction. And you can, uh, you can steer your ship into success. And that's what it's all about. But it's not going to happen just out there doing the hustle. I see it every day. I have guys that I've worked with in groups usually, and they'll just kind of disappear because they, 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 they want the details. Shut down. I want to know, how do I sell more maintenance agreements? We, you, you're asking the wrong questions. We're not there yet. You, you need to come into this identity, this belief system, this, this being. You don't build a, a successful company. The company is an extension of a successful person. This means change. This means challenging who you are rewiring a lot of broken circuits 
a lot of limiting beliefs. Now, I say authentic, and I say the X factor for one reason. It's still you. It's, it's still you. We've just taken and enlarged who you were a little bit. We've enhanced. We've taken those little weak areas and we strengthened them up a, a good bit, strengthened them up, and we've taken your stronger areas and we've accentuated them, and we're leading with those because they have power. And you don't know what that is, and it's not something that you can borrow from somebody else. It has to come from you. Anyway, something to think about on uh, mindset and on what it takes to be successful. Hopefully, you'll join us on some of our future sessions. We're going to be doing some workshops on these, obviously, because it, it, it needs to be done. This The industry doesn't have this. There's a, there is a group, no names, probably more than one group, I, don't, I guess, and they want to jump out and, and, and walk on the coals and get everybody rah rah up and... You know, you come out, you go to the event, you go through everything, which is which is really good. I like that kind of stuff myself uh, to a certain extent. But when you turn around and then you go home and it, it all just falls apart and it was like you never went, what, what good was that? I'm talking about something that you implement every day. It becomes a new habit. Just like if you go to the gym or if you get up every morning, you do your walk or you walk at lunch becomes part of who you are and it has an effect on you. It develops something in you that is healthy, that is strong. It gives you vitality. And if you can do that with your physical body, you think you can't do that with your mental capacity, your personality, your belief systems. Oh, lunch is ready. <laughs> Anyway, Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness, talking to you about your HVAC X Factor. Let's work on that. See if we can't tap into that awesome resource that is right there. It's right there. You just need somebody that's going to believe in it. And guess who that person would be? Pete Ramsey, your HVAC Greatness. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.